So it's back on my bench, the Marantz 2252 WTF. So I had it in my main system and it was intermittent. One of the channels was the right channel kept going out. So I brought it back down here, used deoxid on all the RCA jacks, and that seemed to get things back into working condition. But when I looked at the test signal on the oscilloscope, I noticed that there was some imbalance in the channels. So I've been trying to track that down and fix it. I think that I've tracked it to the switch, the selector switch here. This design is sort of begging for trouble. Never mind the long, long control rod, whatever thingy from the front panel all the way to the back. It's soldered directly to a board. So every time you turn the selector switch, it puts strain on those solder joints. I redid all the solder joints on that board and it didn't seem to fix the problem. I'm going to look into it a bit more and follow the signal in from the input and see where the hangup is. So the scope probes are hooked directly to the input. So it looks like there's only one signal on the scope and that's because the two are perfectly superimposed. They're exactly the same magnitude and in phase, and so it looks like there's only one. If you really want me to prove it, there we go. But there's two. Bring them back up. This is useful for seeing when they become imbalanced, because if they're perfectly imbalanced, you only see one apparent signal. So now we're looking at the output of the selector switch, and again, the signals are perfectly superimposed, which is awesome. It means the selector switch is fine, but it means that if there is still a problem, and I have yet to make sure that there still is a problem because it's, well, forgot to mention, it's one of those things that seems to come and go. Let's see if I can affect it. All right, so far so good. Next I want to look at it at the output of the tape monitor. So now I'm looking at it at the input to the tape monitor switch. And I'm going to try looking at it at the output to the tape monitor switch. It's way up here under these front panel switches, so it's a bit tricky. Couldn't get the probes hooked on there, but I could at least see for a second that yes, the waves were superimposed again. Good so far. So next it goes through two controls. One must be balanced, the other's volume. It's not labeled. Let's just look at the output of the volume. Volume control is all the way down here. So now I've got these hooked to the volume and I've got my waveforms again. They're looking pretty good superimposed, but not perfect. The problem that I was having before was much more obvious. They were clearly different, and those are pretty close. We can see just how close by looking at the actual measurements of magnitude. So here we've got B, I don't know which channel it is, <laughs> is 147 millivolts. I can switch the reading to A, and it's 149. So, close, very close, good enough. Okay, so far so good, still. So moving right along, now we're looking at the input to the tone control board. Just one channel right now, it's going to be too hard to hook both of them on there, so I'm just going to get this one from the back side, hold it on there. And we're good again. Same magnitude as it was at the volume, which is what it should be. The balance control is centered, so it should have no effect on the signal. And now we're looking at the output of the preamp, and it has been preamplified a bit. That's not looking so good. So A, whichever A is, is 1.12 volts RMS. And the other channel is 
So that's probably not enough difference to consider it a problem that needs fixing. It now seems to be a problem that could wait until such time as I get around to doing a parts replacement on this receiver. So that was the preamp output. Let's go ahead and check at the speaker outputs to make sure it looks reasonable there. I'm gonna have to turn the unit around and do that. I didn't expect this result based on my earlier testing. So this is the output at the speaker terminals. And you can see there's now quite a bit more difference between the two signals. Okay, so that's about eight volts, which is about eight watts and eight ohms. Okay, so 7.95 volts on the left channel, 9.7 volts on the right channel. As I said, that's unexpected. My earlier testing seemed to indicate that the channel imbalance was occurring much earlier in the overall circuit. This result is now indicating that the channel imbalance is occurring in the main app. Although I do want to do a little more poking around to see just where the problem is occurring. I want to look right at the outputs from the main amp. A little more complicated what with the speaker protection relay in there. So I'm backtracking a bit in the main amp and looking at the output of the main amp prior to the speaker relay. Problem still there. So I need to go back farther. Well, I can double check the inputs. And conveniently enough, those are right up here. Uh, what the heck do you know about that? So now I'm beginning to wonder whether simply turning this thing around and jarring it just that much may have changed the situation. We're looking at the inputs to the power amp, the main amp, which should look the same as the output of the preamp. Although I'll have to check and make sure there's not something in between that I'm missing. So check this out. I turned the receiver around. So I could look at the stuff that's accessible down here, in particular the pre-outs and main ends here. And I checked those and they looked like this. So now I've reached back around without turning the receiver around. And now I've got the probes attached to the same place at the preamp or at the main amp input where I had them before. And now it looks like this. Which is not what it looked like before, is it? The signals are now only slightly different. 622 millivolts RMS on channel B. 669 on channel A. That's not great, but it's not as bad as it was before. So now again, without moving the receiver, I'm gonna to switch to the speaker outputs. Okay, now we've got the speaker outputs. Again, we've got some imbalance, but not anything like I had before. The right channel, 9.69 volts. Left channel, 8.99. <sighs> this is where it gets really frustrating, because what the friggity frig, right? How do you fix something that one second is broken, and the next second it's not. Ugh. You know, it'd be nice if I could just figure, okay, well now I'm going to put it back together and it'll be fine because it's working now. <laughs> but we've seen that all I got to do is turn the chassis around and it goes wonky again. Let's see if I can reproduce that while it's plugged in. I mean, it has been plugged in previously, but I mean, with the signal going and everything and our signal on the scope. So that didn't do anything. This becomes a really difficult problem to address. It's a non-reproducible error.
I mean, I could look to the preamp board. Previously, I found that the slight imbalance that is still occurring in the signal is introduced in the preamp board. That seems like it would be the place to look. So that's been my attempt to diagnose this problem this evening. I guess uh, stay tuned and we'll see what I can figure out. <laughs> Thank you.